Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson where I'm going to talk about learning. Um I did a lesson in the past about school. I've done a lesson about colleges and universities. I think I even did a short English lesson about back to school. But this lesson is about learning in general. This English lesson is about learning that maybe some of you do where you're not in school. Uh you're not a student anymore and you're just learning uh something new in your life. So, this lesson about learning will kind of cover all of the vocabulary words and phrases that I didn't cover in those other two lessons. A lesson just about learning in general. I know a lot of you are adults and you spend quite a bit of time learning English because you've decided that in your life you wanted to learn another language and there are many things that people learn as they go through life and we'll talk about some of them in this English lesson. When you uh decide you want to learn something new, in English sometimes we use the phrasal verb to take up. So, for instance, I've always thought it would be fun to take up guitar or take up the guitar. The second phrase with the in it is probably more formal and correct but I could say Uh, did you hear uncle Joe has taken up the guitar or aunt Susie has taken up tennis. So, again, I'm using the past tense there um but when you use the phrasal verb to take up, uh, wait, that's not the past tense. He has taken up. That's a that's a present tense. Sorry. The past tense would be last week uncle Joe took up tennis. So, there we go. What a weird verb, eh? Anyways, um uh, when you decide you want to start something new, we sometimes use this phrasal verb to describe it. You could also say um you know Frank started learning English or Frank took up Eng- learning English. Um you could say um yeah, I I keep using musical instruments but it works with sports. It works with um any kind of musical instrument. It works with any kind of hobby or activity. Um maybe someday I'll take up knitting. I'll learn to knit. Then I can make my own mittens and woolen hats but we'll see. There is uh, this phrase and this comes from the world of education. So, Brent from American English with this guy will be familiar with this. I saw Brent in the chat earlier. Um we encourage people to be lifelong learners. We know that you can learn a lot of things when you're in elementary school or what we call grade school in Canada. You can learn a lot when you're in high school and you can learn a lot in college or university but we encourage people to be lifelong learners. To continually learn new things because they know that it's good for the brain. It's really good to always learn something new. Um it's healthy to learn new things and it can be very very exciting as well. So, you'll see this uh, uh elderly lady is taking a class with some younger people. She has probably decided that she wants to learn something new and so she is definitely a lifelong learner. Sometimes you need to learn new things because you want to make a career change. I know many people who are learning English with me and on other YouTube channels have a job but they want to improve their English so they can get a different job. They want to make a career change and they know that learning English is a way to do it. You can also learn new things uh to make a career change in other fields. If I didn't like teaching, I could maybe learn more things about how computers work and then make a career change and become a computer programmer or work in the computer field. So, sometimes people learn new things because they want to make a career change. Um I've never done this. I went to university to become a teacher and I've been a teacher my whole life but you know I've had other small jobs on the side including YouTube now. That's kind of become a job for me. When you decide that you want to make a career change or maybe just when you are interested in something, you might take a night class or you might go to night school. I use the term night class more often than night school but a night class is something is a class you go to at night. Our local colleges uh have a lot of different night classes available and they are classes that are available for people of any age, okay? So, it doesn't matter how old you are. You can see this class here is filled with people of all different ages. Um and night classes commonly are for things like 
how to use the computer, learning another language, learning a skill or activity. There are a lot of night classes where you can learn to uh, do different things outside in the winter. So, sometimes people take a night class to learn how to do a new recreational activity. So, night classes are classes that take place at night. So, if you have a job and you want to be a lifelong learner, you don't have to quit your job in order to learn something new. You can just take a night class or go to night school. Um sometimes we call it training and it's kind of hard to um say what the difference is between a night class, a class or training except that in some jobs, you need training in order to do the job. Even for myself, I went to university to learn to be a teacher but every once in a while, I have training. We'll have a day where someone comes in to do training to teach us how to do something new. Um my brothers and sisters have different jobs. Um they work in the medical field. They work in the computer field and sometimes they'll say that they need to go and get training. So, their boss will say, hey, can you go and take this course? You need to get training so you can do something new. So, many of you probably have this. I know some of you are nurses. Some of you are professionals and what you learned in university isn't enough. Every year, you need to learn new things. So, you go for training. Um sometimes you have on the job training. This is my favorite kind of training. So, if I back up, sometimes you go somewhere to get training but sometimes people come to your place of work and they train you there or you learn from someone else who's who does the same job. So, you have on the job training. In schools, sometimes a student teacher will come to the school and work alongside a a teacher who has taught for many years and then they will receive some on the job training. They'll learn how to do the job while doing the job. That's kind of I think one of the best ways to learn something new uh, is to get on the job training. Sometimes in order to learn something, people do an apprenticeship. An apprenticeship is very similar to on the job training um but for us in Canada, it refers usually to people who work in what are called the trades. If you wanna be a carpenter or a plumber or a bricklayer, generally you will do an apprenticeship. So, that's how we talk about it. You do an apprenticeship and what that means is you are hired by someone who is a plumber or carpenter or bricklayer and they teach you how to do the job while you're doing the job. It's similar to on the job training in some ways but it's a little bit different because usually at the end of an apprenticeship, you get a certificate saying that you are now qualified to do that job. Um there are many different ways to learn new things. M- one of the ways is to take an online course. There are many many people in the world right now offering online courses. Uh in fact, I I find it a little bit overwhelming sometimes. Uh you can take an online course to learn how to play guitar. You can take an online course to learn English. You can take an online course uh to learn how to be a tourist when you visit a city. I didn't really realize that but if I wanted to visit Paris, I could take an online course that teaches me how to go to Paris as a tourist and visit that city. That would be kind of interesting, wouldn't it? Yes, for sure. You can also be self-taught. I have a friend who plays guitar but he never took guitar lessons. He never took a class to learn to play the guitar. He doesn't even know how to read music because he is self-taught. He bought a guitar when he was 13 or 14 years old and he just taught himself how to play the guitar. So, he is self-taught. There are many people who are self-taught. You could say if you are learning English by reading books and watching YouTube videos that you are self-taught you are teaching yourself English. Maybe you don't have a teacher or a tutor. Maybe you aren't taking a class. You are simply teaching yourself the English language. So, many people are self-taught. It is a common phrase to use when talking about musical instruments. 
you might say, wow, he really plays the piano well. Where did he take lessons? And someone could say, oh, he didn't. He self-taught. He taught himself how to play the piano. Um I'm self-taught a little bit in how the things I know how to do on the computer but I do usually read a lot and watch a lot of YouTube videos. So, there are other people helping me. Um when you're self-taught, you might buy a study guide. So, a study guide is a book that helps you learn something. Many of you will be familiar with English study guides. I know some of you take English tests. You take the TOEFL or the IELTS. By the way, I don't even know if I'm saying those correctly but I call it the TOEFL and the IELTS test and there's a Cambridge uh, assessment of English test as well. Um and I know there are other ones and before you take a test, sometimes uh you find it useful to buy a study guide. A study guide tells you things about the test and helps you study so that you can do well when you take the test. So, a study guide is a very handy thing to have. Sometimes viewers will say, Bob, how do I prepare for my TOEFL test or how do I prepare for my IELTS? And I often recommend them that they buy a study guide uh, or that they find someone who can help uh, them get prepared for the test but study guides work really well. Sometimes a study guide comes with a workbook or exercise book. In French, we would probably call it a cahier. Um a workbook is different than a study guide in that a workbook will have exercises in it. So, an exercise, let me see how big I can make this. Not very big. Um an exercise, a workbook or exercise book will have things you can practice and then usually at the back of the workbook, there will be the answers. So, you can do the exercise. You can fill in the blanks. You can write the sentences. You can conjugate the verbs in a an English learning exercise book uh, and then from that, you can decide whether you've gotten things right or wrong. So, um you might buy a study guide. You might get a workbook and in that workbook, there might be exercises. By the way, um these aren't books I necessarily recommend. These are just pictures. I don't really know much about study guides or workbooks. Someone suggested though that I should buy some English learning study guides and then I should make a video where I tell you if I think it's a good one or not. I don't know if I'm gonna do that. Maybe Brent wants to do that. Maybe Brent and I should do that together. <laughs> Maybe that's that would be a good collaboration. I don't know if Brent's still here. Uh may I'll I'll send him an email but maybe someday I'll do that. Maybe I'll order some English study guides and then review them and make a video letting you know which ones are the best. Um when you are learning things, you might keep a notebook or a journal. You might take notes. You might make notes. You might write down some notes. When I was in university, I would go to class and I would take notes while the professor was talking. I would write things down. I would take notes. Um I would do let's see. So, take and make with notes kind of mean the same thing. I often say take notes but I have heard people say, oh, I need to make some notes or I need to make a note of that. That's kind of a common thing. If I don't wanna forget something, I'll make a note of it. That means that I write it down. Um let me see where I am. Four minutes. Okay. Um or you might simply keep what's called a journal. A journal is similar to a notebook. Technically, journaling is when you write something down at the end of the day but you could say that you have a journal as well. I do recommend for people learning English that you keep a journal that at the end of your day, you you write down some of the things that you learned that day in English. Some of the words, some of the phrases, etc. Uh let's see here. Um you might hire a private tutor. So, a private tutor um can give you lessons for almost anything. It depends though on what you are learning. If you wanted to practice your English, we would say you should hire a private tutor. We might call them a conversation partner or you might call them a teacher. We wouldn't call them a private teacher though. We don't really use that phrase in English but definitely you might hire a private tutor. These private tutors I think are on Preply um which is one of those cool websites where you can find someone 
to practice English with or any other language. There is a link below in the description if you're interested in Preply. Um and you can then meet online or in person, okay? So, there's a couple ways to meet someone if you hire a private tutor. So, if you decided that you wanted to practice your English, you could hire a private tutor and then you could meet that private tutor either online. So, via Skype or FaceTime or Zoom. I think Zoom is the most popular now. Um or you might meet uh them in person. They might say, hey, let's meet at this coffee shop once a week for 30 minutes and we'll practice English. Um so, those those are the two ways. Again, going back to the question about school. When we talk about school, we usually say um students are either learning in person or they're learning remotely. So, slightly different terminology but uh similar in kind of this what we're trying to communicate there. Um and you can have lessons. So, a lesson is any small piece of learning. If you watch one of my YouTube videos, it's a lesson. You are right now watching an English lesson uh about learning, okay? When you hire a private tutor, they might just have a conversation with you or they might actually have a lesson. They'll teach you certain things about the English language. When you learn to play the piano, you have piano lessons. So, you go once a week and you meet with your piano teacher and you have a piano lesson. So, you can take lessons, piano lessons. You can take tennis lessons. You can take golf lessons. There are all kinds of lessons that you can take. You can take English lessons. Part of taking uh lessons and part of learning something new is practice and this is kind of what uh Corey J was talking about that sometimes you just need to practice and repeat things. If any of you play violin or piano, you'll know that you often need to practice. That sometimes you practice the same thing over and over again because practice makes perfect. That's a saying that we have in English. We'll often say practice makes perfect. So, the more you practice, the better you will be at something. When my kids take piano lessons, they have a piano teacher but then between lessons, they have to practice during the week so that the next time they go, they can just do a good job. One of the things I find English learners maybe could do more of is practice. I know a lot of you read a lot and you watch a lot of YouTube videos but it might be a good idea to decide if you are practicing enough. Do you spend time during the week writing things out? Do you have a small workbook that can help you study? So, it's good to practice. Um there are more things to learn than just piano or tennis or golf or a new language. Um sometimes people just want to learn how to be better people and they will buy what are called a self-help books. A self-help book is written by someone who supposedly knows how to live a good life and they will write a book that teaches other people how to do that. I have not read very many self-help books um but I know that self-help books can be motivating. Self-help books can help you not just become a better person but maybe become a happier person um and there are many many types of self-help books in the world. There's a lot of self-help books. Um if you want to improve your English and improve yourself as a person, you could buy a self-help book. Um some of you This is obviously Duolingo but some of you when you are learning something new, you will get a learning app on your phone. You will download a new app and the app will teach you new things. Um Duolingo, I think is a great uh learning app. Some people like Duolingo and some people don't like Duolingo. I like Duolingo if it's one of many things you are doing to practice your English and to learn English. I think it's a great tool to have in your toolbox when you are learning a language. I don't think you should only learn English by using one app but certainly if you want to learn something new, there is probably a learning app that will teach you to do it. I know there are learning apps to learn guitar. There are learning apps. If you want to learn how to identify birds, there are apps that teach you how to do that. If you wanna be a bird watcher, you want to go out and watch birds or again, if you want to learn English, there are many apps that will help you do that. 
Um just a few miscellaneous things here. Um when you take a course when you are older, we usually refer to it as adult education or continuing education, okay? So, there's two names for it. Um many people who are older sometimes when they are semi-retired or retired, they will take adult education classes. Often, they are classes where you learn how to use the computer and learn how to use the internet. Something that I guess for older people can be challenging. Um but continuing education and adult education classes aren't just for really old people but they are for people who are older than university age, okay? So, if you are 30, you could take a continuing education class or an adult education class. Um sometimes you take a course or you go for training because you want certification. This is actually a certificate but the certificate basically says that you have a certain certification, okay? So, you can have a certification to weld metal together. You can have a certification uh in plumbing and those types of things. Usually in the trades, there are different certificates you can get. You can get certified or you can get your certification. If you're confused about all different the different versions of that word, just please do look it up and read a bit about certification, being certified and getting a certificate. There you go. The certificate is the actual piece of paper just so you know. You can also audit a class. So, when you audit a class, it means you take the class but you don't have to do any work. You just listen. So, I have a friend who actually audits a class once a year at the local university. He's actually 62 years old but he enjoys auditing a class. That means he goes and listens. He doesn't have to do any work. He doesn't have to write any papers. He just audits the class because he's interested in the class. He audited a class about the environment. So, he wanted to learn more about pollution and how to protect the environment. So, he audited a class at the local university. Basically means he went to the class just for fun and he enjoyed learning a few new things. And sometimes when you want to learn something new, it's good to join a club. Um clubs are awesome places to perfect your newfound skills. So, maybe you have started to play chess. You've taken up chess and you decide you're really good at it. Well, you might join a chess club like these gentlemen did and then you will play against other people. There are language learning clubs when there's no COVID. Right now, there probably aren't any but you can join clubs where you can go and just practice your English. Um there are what are called meetups now. So, there's a website called meetup and there's a few other ones where you can find groups of people who are meeting in your local town or city um to talk about and learn certain things. So, there might be a meetup for people who are learning how to be YouTubers or a meetup for people who play chess or a meetup for people who are bird watchers. So, clubs are certainly really cool places Uh, to go if you are learning a new skill or if you have taken up a new hobby. 